It's Tuesday, May 10th, the closing day of the fair. And I am back at the armory to see some galleries upstairs in the period rooms. But before, let's make a stop at the mezzanine level, where there is a nice view of the entire drill hall. I also highly recommend a cocktail or two at the balcony bar. Who is there to judge? As part of Creative Spaces, here is a large-scale painting by Anselm Kiefer. It's presented by Beck and Eglin Gallery, and that's my first stop. The founders, Ute Eglin and Michael Beck, met in the 1980s. In, in Leipzig, right now in Dortmund. Oh. Yeah, this yeah, was before this Leipzig. Before Leipzig yes. This was so 10 years before Leipzig. It ah, is awful. We are really <laughs> old. We started 1984 okay. with the art business. Okay. And so we decided after 10 years to, to open the uh, gallery Ours. together. Yeah. Back in Egeling mm -hmm. in uh, Dusseldorf, a gallery which exists since 1994, founded in East Germany. Uh, Leipzig, sure. yes, a crazy thing. We are West Germans, but we found it after the reunification, the gallery in East Germany, but found out quite quickly that this is not the place to be, mm -hmm. uh, at least not for the next hundred years. So we then opened a gallery actually also in New York. We had this cooperation with John McEnroe, the tennis player, John McEnroe. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's a great w art collector. Yes. In Green Street, Soho. Okay, and we had a gallery there for two years together with him and had a wonderful Nolde show there, which was really crazy, yes. Yeah. Uh, so what happened to that gallery? Uh, after two years, uh, John uh, moved to other things and okay. so uh, the gallery does not exist anymore, I see. yeah. I see. And what's the focus primarily? Is it old art, modern art? Our focus is on quality. Okay. So we are not a gallery uh, concentrating on one special artistic movement, mm -hmm. but we carry art from, nine, from the 8080s, so mm -hmm. from Impressionism up to today. During last Tefaf, Beck and Egling presented Ukrainian artist Alyosha. It was one of the most Instagrammable installations at the fair, and I had the pleasure of meeting him in Basel that same year. We would do it still wider. I would love to uh, deal with Renaissance paintings and Renaissance art, but uh, this is just not possible. Uh, so, But this uh, Impressionism until today, this is all what we do, with specialities uh, of German Expressionism, so we are very strong with Emil Nolde and with August Macke, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, post-war the Zero movement, Heinz Mack is exclusively represented worldwide by our gallery in the time of 1957 to 1966, and then we have some international uh, contemporary artists. Yeah, I noticed yes. that it's Spanish mainly today, right? Uh, not, uh, no. Uh, so we never, we don't care whether someone is a male, Spanish, German, female, or whatever. It's again the quality. And here we have a Spanish born person, but Manolo Valdez has been living since more than 30 years now in, in New York. And he has his okay. studio here in New York, so he's more a New Yorker than an okay. American New Yorker than uh, Spanish, yeah. Uh, so what we did here about two years ago, we brought some uh, Picassos to Manolo and asked him whether he can get influenced and inspired by these. And then we had this wonderful show. So he did about six paintings, which are Como Protexto Picasso. And uh, you can see the best at the big painting in the, the background where you see the face from the lithograph, Picasso's uh, lithograph, Femme au Fauteuil, which the sitter was uh, Francois Chilot, who actually lives here in New York as well with 100 years. And uh, so this is a very nice uh, curated show, which is not only bringing things for sale to an art fair, but having also an idea of an exhibition. Once in one of the interviews, you mentioned that you are not Basel people, you are <laughs> Tsefaf people. Can you comment? Oh, absolutely. I'm ha very happy to talk about this. It has, again, to do with quality and not mit with a new market. I mean, if you look uh, in, in the contemporary market, uh, if you go to an auction uh, today, uh, and then again in a half a year, you will find 
a couple or a bunch of new names you never heard before. You look on the estimates and it says 100 to 150,000 or something like this. And then the, the, uh, the result is 1 million or more. Yeah. For people you don't know, for people who have, haven't had a museum uh, show or any background, but a very strong, financial strong gallery. And uh, this is what you find also in Basel. You find in Basel also wonderful pieces and it's a wonderful fair. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous that I do not participate there. But we decided uh, in former times to really to focus on Maastricht, which has an offer of 7,000 years of art. So this means what you find here is something which has to do with mankind, with development, with quality with provenance and all this and I think uh, I feel better with that I love contemporary art and to find new things but I have to reflect that this cannot have a price like a Monet painting or, uh, or a 7,000 year old Yemen sculpture mm -hmm. so that's the difference I see and I feel much comfortable with the Tefaf idea of bringing quality. The next one on my list is Axel Verwoerd Gallery from Belgium. I spoke with them here briefly in 2019. It's time to get to know uh, them better. I'm working as an uh, art historian at the Axel Verwoerd Gallery. Uh, mm -hmm. We are based in Antwerp in Belgium. Mm -hmm. So uh, the gallery was established by Axel Verwoerd and his wife my, my Verwoerd um, 50 years ago. So last year we celebrated our 50 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, What's the primary focus of the gallery? Who do you represent? Is it contemporary? Is it uh, mm. old masters? Actually, we do kind of both. So uh, mm -hmm. our focus is more in the post-war uh, period and then as well some contemporary artists. So mm -hmm. as the firm started as an antique dealership and also more um, kind of second market um, collections. Mm -hmm. uh, and Boris Verwoord, the son of Axel and Mai, he founded the gallery uh, in 2011. So since then we're also uh, focusing on contemporary art and also some Belgian artists, but also a lot of uh, Japanese Gutai artists, mm -hmm. uh, German Zero artists and also kind of in a more broader way also kind of a, a collection of artists who uh, are also connected to the same philosophy. Um. Here's another German gallery where coincidentally both Michael Beck and Ute Egling worked before. Meet gallery Thomas from Munich. <laughs> you mentioned that the gallery was established by your father, right? Can that's you please tell me a little bit about the um, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. It started in 1964. He mm -hmm. founded a gallery in Munich in the Maximilianstrasse. Munich was um, really a city that came from like the 19 teens because there were the big galleries. And at that mm -hmm. time, uh, Kandinsky was there, Yavlansky was there, the heart of the Blue Rider, mm -hmm. um, and all of the big galleries from the time. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it lost that a little bit after the war, obviously. But then my father started the gallery in 1964. And, and since when are you working with the gallery? I'm there since the mid 90s. I I was actually um, working at the gallery very briefly just um, and I saw a painting standing there that I was so delighted that I studied history of arts and then I was always working in the gallery and then I got stuck <laughs> but I don't regret a moment of it. And uh, what's the focus? And the real speciality which we have is the German Expressionism, that's for sure. So the period between 1900 and, and the First World War, 1914, mm -hmm. and there the Blue Rider, the Brücke and the Blue Rider. So the German um, Expressionists with also Soutine and Munch and Beckmann and all of these kind of people. Mm -hmm. And then the classical modernism with Picasso, Miro, Leger, um, all of these uh, people that have been working through the wars, over the wars, uh, mm -hmm. Calder. And mm -hmm. we are very uh, much working in any kind of established modern in this sense. We have a few contemporary artists. We represent Peter Haley in Germany, mm -hmm. who was an um, established American artist. Um, so we do up to contemporary, but not the young contemporary usually. Here we have paintings from 1902 with the Edvard Munch, uh, going over the 30s with Picasso and Chagall from 1937. And we really go like into the very fresh 2020, 21 works. There's a Peter Haley from the 90s, a Botero from, from 2021. So I think it's nice to be able to cover that kind of grounds. And, and no, I really enjoy it. How did the, the pandemic affect your business? Uh, the pandemic, the two years, were quite surprising because first we thought, oh my God, what are we doing? Uh, but we did very well. The last two years were financially very good because we had uh, less costs. 
we could concentrate more on business and collectors had t also more time to decide on pieces so this was quite good. Uh, to be honest I think it was a maybe a nice change as well we uh, we experienced a lot of uh, support and also many people who were, were really during the pandemic who uh, were in need of art and um, so uh, also with, with the art fairs, with the viewing rooms, it was something completely different. But of course you had time because we were at home and, and working. Well, I mean, I think it was a big shock for everyone to sort of stop dead all of a sudden. We used to go to eight fairs and all of a sudden you're stuck at home. Um, so that was kind of hard. But uh, I think as an art dealer, we are so versatile. We do so many different things, like we, you know, by talking to people, by traveling, by doing phone calls, by doing videos, by whatever. So we, it's easy to adapt because we have so many different methods of working. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, it was quite interesting because a lot of people, are, my collectors, were all of a the sudden they were at home they had time and I could call them and they didn't have a business meeting and they weren't distracted with other things but they really were there and I could speak to them so actually after a first um, moment of shock we adapted quite well and we did a lot much more with videos um, with OBR whatsapp rates. calls OBRs and and it was quite okay we did very good art dealing in that time due to the openness of people and it's a little bit strange now to be back uh, in the in the I call it art circus with uh, um, uh, with uh, auctions going on uh, the hundred seventy thousand a uh, million sorry the, yesterday fe fought by Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe. Yes. Monroe. Yes. and so. it is nice to be back but it's also very exhausting we have forgotten a little bit about uh, art fairs speaking uh -huh. in different languages so if you can sum it up was it mm -hmm. successful it actually it was really nice and to finally see some familiar faces or even faces or yeah, people who you connected with during the online viewing rooms and that you can finally uh, meet here in person uh, so yeah actually it had been uh, a wonderful time and yeah we were very happy yes it was a great show and we, we were so happy to be back in New York it was two and a half years I haven't been here um, we have so many collectors here we have so many people who mean well with us and whom we know and it was just like really sort of getting back a nice reunion and it was very successful also from the from the economic side so we had nice sales and uh, we had nice material and it was really great yeah Congratulations, I read in press release that you sold this large painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Manolo Valdez is very well known in New York. He has a lot of followers, so it was really nice to be here with his work. The last thing I want to mention is creative spaces. These are the areas where galleries display some artworks outside of their booths. Baton Twirler by Dwayne Hansen, a new scene by Wendell Castle, Francois Xavier Lalande's Hippo Bar and Anselm Kiefer, the heavenly palaces brought by Beck and Agling, which we saw at the beginning. What's next? As Silky Thomas says, that is a little silly after having such a long time of, you know, being at home and cleaning the windows and doing the dishes. <laughs> So, no, I'm happy to get back on the road. I can't agree more. See you soon in Basel and Maastricht. From New York, I'm Jane Greaves.